In this video, we're going to be reading some poems together with the purpose of identifying their theme. Now, we've talked about theme before in class, but if you need a refresher, here's one way to help you distinguish what the theme is. First, start by trying to identify the topic of the poem. This is usually something you could relay in one or two words, and it's what the story is about or what the poem is about. For example, you could say that this poem is about the concept of beauty, or about the concept of transformation or getting older, or many other things. Topic is a great place to start. Theme is sort of taking that one step deeper. When you're telling about theme, you're telling what the story says about that topic. So if the topic of the poem or the story was beauty, the theme could be those we call ugly sometimes become the most beautiful. Or maybe that poem's about aging and getting older, but the theme goes a little bit deeper and it's talking about how getting older can bring really great things into life, but it can also be a little bit scary. If you identify the topic first, usually you can come about what the theme is with a little bit of deep thought. That's not to say that it's always easy. You will read poems that completely confuse you. Out of all the forms of writing, poetry takes the most interpretation meaning that sometimes you really have to dig into that topic to understand what the theme is. Sometimes you need to understand where the author is coming from and their background. For our practice with Theme Ahead, it's okay to stop, take a break, move on to another poem, and then come back to the one you were working on later. So here's what we're going to do for practice. We'll read along with seven different poems. As we read, I want you to take notes. Pause at the end of each poem that we read, and I want you to try to identify the topic first, and then identify what the theme is, and write those down. Our first poem is going to be Point of View by Shel Silverstein. Thanksgiving dinner's sad and thankless. Christmas dinner's dark and blue. When you stop and try to see it, from the turkey's point of view. Sunday dinner isn't sunny. Easter feast or just bad luck. When you see it from the viewpoint of a chicken or a duck. Oh, how I once loved tuna salad, pork and lobsters, lamb chops too, till I stopped and looked at dinner from the dinner's point of view. Our next poem is going to be Purple by Nikki Grimes. Once you've met my friend Denitra, you can spot her miles away. She's the only girl around here who wears purple every day. Whether summer's almost over or spring rains are pouring down, if you see a girl in purple, it must be Denitra Brown. Purple socks and jeans and sneakers, purple ribbons for her hair, purple shirts and slacks and sweaters, even purple underwear, purple dresses, shorts and sandals, purple coat and purple gloves. There's just no mistake about it. Purple's what Denitra loves. Purple's okay, I guess. I've worn it once or twice. But there's nothing wrong with yellow. Red and blue are also nice. So one day I asked Denitra if once in a while, for fun, she would wear another color, just to surprise everyone. But her mom has told her stories about queens in Timbuktu, and it seems they all wore purple, never red or green or blue. Now she might just be a princess, after all, who's to say? So just in case, she'll dress in purple each and every day. Poem 3 is Summertime Sharing, also by Nikki Grimes. Denitra sits hunched on the stoop and pouts. I ask her what there is to pout about. Nothing much, she says to me. But then I see her eyes following the ice cream man. I shove my hand into my pocket and find the change there where I left it. Be right back, I yell, running down the street. Me and my fast feet are there and back in just two shakes. Denitra breaks the popsicle in two and gives me half. The purple ice trickles down her chin. I start to laugh. Her teeth flash in one humongous grin, telling me she's glad that I'm her friend without even saying a word. Poem number four continues our series of poems by Nikki Grimes with Zuri at Bat. Dear Denitra, at the softball game last week, smart mouth JT snickered loud and said, what makes you think a puny girl like you can help us win? Exactly where you been, I asked him stepping in. When the pitch came, I slammed the ball so far it ripped through the clouds and headed for a star. I strutted around the bases, took my own sweet time. My new friend Nina laughed and bet JT he couldn't hit a ball as far as me. He can't. And that's a fact. This next poem is a little bit longer, and it's Oranges by Gary Soto. The first time I walked with a girl, I was 12. Cold and weighted down with two oranges in my jacket. December. 
frost cracking beneath my steps, my breath before me, then gone. As I walked toward her house, the one whose porch light burned yellow night and day, in any weather, a dog barked at me, until she came out pulling at her gloves, face bright with rouge. I smiled, touched her shoulder, and led her down the street, across a used car lot and a line of newly planted trees, until we were breathing before a drugstore. We entered, the tiny bell bringing a sales lady down a narrow aisle of goods. I turned to the candies, teared with ble bleachers, and asked what she wanted. Light in her eyes, a smile starting at the corners of her mouth. I fingered a nickel in my pocket, and when she lifted a chocolate that cost a dime, I didn't say anything. I took the nickel from my pocket, then an orange, and set them quietly on the counter. When I looked up, the lady's eyes met mine and held them, knowing very well what it was all about. Outside, a few cars hissing past, fog hanging like old coats between the trees. I took my girl's hand in mine for two blocks, then released it to let her unwrap the chocolate. I peeled my orange that was so bright against the gray of December that from some distance, someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. Two poems to go. This is On Turning Ten by Billy Collins. The whole idea of it makes me feel like I'm coming down with something. Something worse than any stomach ache, or the headaches I get from reading in bad light. A kind of measles of the spirit, a mumps of the psyche, a disfiguring chicken pox of the soul. You tell me it is too early to be looking back, but that is because you have forgotten the perfect simplicity of being one, and the beautiful complexity introduced by two. But I can lie on my bed and remember every digit. At four, I was an Arabian wizard. I could make myself invisible by drinking a glass of milk a certain way. At seven, I was a soldier. At nine, a prince. But now I am mostly at the window, watching the late afternoon light. Back then, it never felt so solemnly against the side of my treehouse. And my bicycle never leaned against the garage as it does today. All the dark blue speed drained out of it. This is the beginning of sadness, I say to myself as I walk through the universe in my sneakers. It is time to say goodbye to my imaginary friends. Time to turn the first big number. It seems only yesterday I used to believe there was nothing under my skin but light. If you cut me, I would shine. But now, if I fall upon the sidewalks of life, I skin my knees. I bleed. Our last poem is Dreams by Langston Hughes. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. And that ends our poetry reading for today. Now, I want you to make sure to go back, and if there were any poems you can identify the theme for, think a little bit harder on the topic and what the author might have been trying to say. Now your second activity for today is going to be to write a poem. I want you to choose a topic, theme, and what style of poem you're going to write. If you'd like to write the poem first, you can, but I would advise in this case to actually choose the topic and the theme first. While that might kind of be the reverse of what most people do when they write poetry, I think it's going to help us break down and understand kind of how poems work. So do it in whichever order works for you, but I would advise to choose the topic and theme first. Write that poem down. If you have any questions, let me know, and good luck.